the throw 2D with Wall's eye expression is basically the same as a regular throw 2D, except that the expression also can handle walls from which uh, the object should bounce. In this case, we want to animate here this text layer with walls, and the only thing you really need to enter is the ground height, so the height at which the element should bounce. Yeah, so in this case, uh, here at this height it should bounce, which is 600. Um, so we can basically just copy this value here and say this is our ground height. And then we also need to give the wall position. Yeah, so we have two walls here in total, and the one wall where it should bounce uh, is at this position. Yeah, so we can just move the the, uh, the the text layer here where it should bounce. And now the bouncing is of course the uh, x coordinate. Yeah, so we look here at the x coordinate. This is this one. Just copy it and paste it here. So we can use either of the two walls. Basically, it doesn't matter. So let's use here the first one and say the second one we currently do not need. So we move it behind the first one where it's not uh, disturbing us. Yeah? So let's say 2000 or so. And once we have this, we can apply it to our layer. And let's see what's happening. Currently, nothing happens except that it falls down. And this is because it has no movement. Yeah, what we can do now is keyframe some movement. So we can, for example, say the layer should start here. So we set a keyframe and then we go, let's say, two frames or so further and set a new keyframe and say it should move now in this direction. Yeah, so we have now here a keyframe movement and now the eye expression continues this computation yeah, and bounces here at the wall and like this. Yeah, now it moves like this. So it bounces here and moves in this direction. And now let's say we want it to bounce also here at this text. Yeah, so we can simply use this text here as a second wall. So I just move again, uh, or maybe let's deactivate the expression for a moment. I undo this here and go here and deactivate such that we can now nicely move it again. Yeah, and I just move it to the position here at which it should bounce. So around here it should bounce. This is the following x coordinate. I copy it and set this here as a second wall. Yeah, like this. Okay, now we have the first wall representing here this this green wall and the second wall, which is this text here. And again, I apply this to the position of this with walls. So apply. And now I remove here this third keyframe that I accidentally set here to move it. Yeah. So we just need these two keyframes here for the beginning of this movement. So this is our keyframe movement. And now it's continued like this. And now you can see it also nicely bounces here at, these, uh, at this throw 2D layer yeah so let's like take a ram preview at this okay if you want to a little bit modify this you have further controls you have here elastic bounce for the ground which says basically how much energy it loses when it bounces on the ground yeah or how elastic it is whether it's more falling down like a stone that is not bouncing at all or bouncing very much. And we have the same here also for the walls. Yeah, if we say set the elastic bounce for the walls, for example, to 0% and reapply this, you can see what then happens is it falls down. And here at the wall, it doesn't uh, bounce elastically at all, but just falls down. Yeah, And if we say, OK, we want something like 30%, elasticity, 13%, then it bounces just a bit. Yeah. And if we set it to 100%, for example, uh, you can see here it bounces quite a lot. Yeah. So here you can basically uh, control how elastic it bounces from the wall. Here you have the same also for the ground. This I show in more detail in the Throw2D uh, mini tutorial.
Okay, all the physics and simulation start is also the same as in the uh, simple throw 2D without walls, so I'm not covering this um, in more detail. One more nice thing I can show you is uh, a nice trick to uh, exactly place the element where you want it. Uh, let's just reset this here again to 50%. So we have now the following movement. It bounces here, bounces at the throw 2D, and now somewhere here it stops. Yeah, and let's say you want it here, but not exactly here, but like 20 pixels more to the right or 20 pixels more to the left. Yeah, An easy or convenient way how you can do this is uh, you use uh, actually a key tweak. So I go here to Window and use Key Tweak. Just takes a moment to pop up. Let's dock it here. And the idea is that I want um, all keyframes in the work area, so I choose this one here, this option here, all keyframes in my work area to move. And then I choose as the work area the part here containing these two first keyframes. And now I can move these keyframes. So it basically means we start moving here our original position from which we throw. Yeah? And this automatically also means that the stop position moves accordingly. So if we move the start 10 pixels to the right, you can see that the result here also moves 10 pixels to the right. Yeah. This means if we say, oh, we want to throw it, but it should actually land finally here, now you can easily do it like this. So you adjust the starting position of your throw and preview already the resulting position where it ends up to be uh, and just move it around with these arrows here. So the nice thing about this feature of Key Tweak is that you move both these keyframes simultaneously while being at another frame, so previewing the final position where it arrives at, and set the starting position accordingly. Yeah, so very nice if you need to fine-tune, if, if your text here should arrive at the end as at a very specific place, you can first roughly uh, play around with uh, how fast you throw and in what direction, and once you've dialed this in and it's almost perfect, you can use key tweak to get uh, the uh, fine-tuning of the positioning.